Yep, we had a fire aboard Aquarius, and I made a video about it. Here you can see the fire damage. And that's where the fire started, which is that connector. Now you can watch that old video. I'll put a link in the notes below. I changed a few things after that fire. I bought a few of these. I put one in the forward cabin and one in the aft cabin. Might get one for the captain's table area as well. Because I found you can't fight a fire unless you can get to it without killing yourself. I also bought five fire blankets and put them in all the rooms next to the fire extinguishers. This is my new electrical box I'm making. But this video is about how this type of fire might have been avoided and how you can reduce your risk of an electrical fire. Cue the intro. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. The fire started here, bad connection and then burnt the whole connector. And these are the wires that uh, went to the connector, but it burnt this whole wire out completely. The cause of the fire on board Aquarius was due to a poorly made electrical connection in the engine room. It can happen all the time. You could have a rat eat a wire, someone drill into a wall containing wires, old bad wiring, or you could just have a bad electrician, like in our case. Usually, every time you have an electrical problem on a boat, it's a bad connection. In this slide, you can see only two strands of wire connecting the hot. What would happen if you started pulling current through this connection? It would heat up, and when a metal heats up, the resistance also increases, which causes more heat. Then the connection would melt. Then the current would start to arc and continue heating up until it caused a fire, like in our case. A simple breaker will not trip because of a bad connection like the one shown on the previous slide. It will only trip if there's too much current through the circuit. If you have a 10 amp breaker, it will not break with a 9 amp load. But 9 amps could easily cause a fire. What about a GFI? No, a GFI circuit breaker will trip if you lose current. And a GFI breaker is more for making sure you don't get shocked, not a fire. If you lose between 30 milliamps and 100 milliamps of current, a GFI breaker will detect the difference in current between the line and neutral and trip. But again, a GFI was not created to protect you against fire. But an arc fault breaker will detect this type of fault. It will detect a series arc like the one shown on the line or neutral and will detect an arc across line and neutral, which is called a parallel arc. So here's a new box I'm working on. And you can see it's got an arc fault detector and a GFI. And also, I put in a kilowatt hour counter just so I'll know exactly how many kilowatt hours I've taken. Rather than, you know, trusting everybody else's kilowatt hour counters. Sometimes you can't even see the kilowatts on the kilowatt our counters that they have. So anyways, this is a new box and it will detect faults that could cause a fire. And my new box will go between Shore Power and Aquarius. If you learned something, please subscribe and happy sailing. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here 
to subscribe that really helps us and if you want to watch more of us click one of those they said they came from Spanish. Oh. Oh, yeah.